Today we're going to be talking about how to train to be a well-rounded shooter and a well-rounded asset. Go ahead and roll the intro. Hey guys, it's Eric from Brown Hatchet. Thank you for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And we are going to be talking about how to train to be a well rounded shooter and a well rounded asset. And what does that mean? Now, before we get started, I want to talk about the point of this channel and the whole point of what Brown Hatchet is here to do. And at the end of the day, we are here for the community. So, as far as when it comes to our reviews or videos we do talking about specific gear or talking about different topics, it's just to give you more data to make an informed decision. At the end of the day, our loyalty is to you, the shooter. Now understand we do have some companies that we work with so that way we can continue to do what we're doing, but it also does help to have your support to be able to make sure that this channel stays up and we can continue doing reviews that are in depth unbiased and completely just the, the straight facts from a shooter's perspective. We do have a, uh, for all of our classes, if you've been to a class of ours in the past, we do have a closed off group chat specifically for our students who have been with us in the past. And that group chat is on our website. If you've been to a class of ours in the past and you do not have access to that, Make sure that you get a hold of us and we will make sure that you're added into that closed off network and group chat so that way you guys can talk to each other and you guys can share things about equipment, whatever, between like-minded individuals. We also have a closed group chat on our website specifically for the lifetime members. So it's a way of us giving back to those who are helping us keep the channel alive. So if you'd like to be a lifetime member, you can go to the website and sign up for that. But we have a closed group chat on our website specifically for the lifetime members as well. Now what the lifetime membership gives you besides discounts and stuff like that on courses and in the store is it also gets you the uh, two free classes for the first year that you sign up and then a free class every year after that. And that's just our way of giving back. We are also starting a discord for all bear on hatchet. If you follow Barrel and Hatch on YouTube or whatever outlet, we are going to give you guys access to our Discord server so that way there's a closed off network where you guys can talk to each other. And we do have a moderator that we're gonna be assigning to that chat so that way it kind of keeps it positive and keeps everything you know, cordial. But at the end of the day, we wanna make sure you guys have an area to network, communicate and things of that nature. Lastly, if you are watching this video and you get something out of it, share it to somebody, share it to a friend, share it to a family member who would get something out of this and is of the same mindset as you. And also, like and subscribe to the video because it really does help the channel to grow and get more outreach to new people who are looking to be a prepared citizen. If you are interested about questions or things of that nature, check the comment section below. We have a ton of guys who are in the Barrel and Hatchet community that comment their knowledge and their you know, experiences in that comment section. So there's tons of times, if you ask a question, there's a ton of people that are willing to help answer that for you and share their perspectives on things. Now today we're gonna to be covering multiple different types of things. And we're gonna start off with foundation and fundamentals when it comes to shooting. We're also gonna talk about what kind of shooter do you wanna be? There's multiple different types of shooters. You need to identify what kind of shooter that you wanna be. Also, when is it the right time to take a class? A lot of questions that we get about is like, I don't know when I'm supposed to be taking class, even from experienced shooters. How do I gauge when I'm ready for a new course to be able to help me up my level and up my game and my experience? We're also gonna talk about our barrel and hatchet classes that we offer and what those entail and the type of topics that we cover in those classes. And then we're gonna be going into a word from our sponsor we do have a ad in this video so that will be right after where we talk about barrel and hatchet classes 
afterwards, I'm gonna be doing a small video on my battle belt, and that will be on the range because we've gotten a lot of questions about people asking, hey, what's your belt setup look like? Have you updated it? What do you get? What do you add and what do you take off your belt? So I will be talking about my belt setup while I was on the range, and that way you guys can see what I'm rocking today. And after that, I'm gonna do a closing statement and just kind of put everything all together and cap it all off. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first topic, which is foundation and fundamentals. All right, so foundation is so important. It doesn't matter what type of skill you're doing, um, whether it's weightlifting, whether it's you know some sort of sport, you always have to start off on a solid foundation in the fundamentals of whatever category you're doing. So we have the fundamentals of shooting. There are a, you know, multiple set of cat hair. When it comes to the fundamentals of shooting, it is just the basics. For anybody who's ever played sports, they always tell you, you gotta master the basics. And at the end of the day, when you see someone who's a really, really good shooter, they're just really, really good at mastering the basics and taking all the inefficiencies out of the fundamentals. When it comes to, you know, football, you've never heard of a wide receiver that ever went to advanced catching school. He just learned how to catch really, really well, or he learned how to throw or tackle really well. It's all built upon a solid foundation of skill sets that are grounded in the basics. Now, when it comes to the basics, you wanna make sure that you have good form. At the end of the day, there's a lot of courses out there and a lot of older organizations that taught a more fuddy way of doing things. And those types of things establish either incorrect form or just form that's not very good. So if you've ever done CrossFit, you know that form when it comes to lifting weight is extremely important or weightlifting in general. So you wanna make sure that you start off training correctly. You start off training on the fundamentals with good form and taking as many inefficiencies out of the basics in your foundation so that way you don't learn bad habits and have to unlearn those things later down the road. Whenever you start getting really good at the basics or you start training, you're gonna have a longer period of time to be able to achieve certain skills. So what I mean by that, is for example, if I'm drawing from the holster and it takes me four seconds to get one round on target because I'm applying drawing from the holster, all the fundamentals and being able to achieve getting one round on the target where ex exactly where I want it, that time as I start to train more is going to get faster. So as I'm training longer and I train more, I will see a massive difference and a huge improvement, meaning I will see whole seconds come off of you know, drawing from the holster and making one shot on the target. I will see like, you know, I go from four seconds now down to two seconds or, you know, under two seconds, which is a massive improvement. But like weightlifting or if I'm trying to lose weight, you're gonna see massive gains in the beginning and then it starts to slow down to where you're losing a half a pound, you know, less than half a pound. It's the same with shooting. You're gonna start shaving seconds off your time the more that you train to now you're gonna start going to classes where you're trying to achieve shaving off a tenth of a second to be able to get that faster performance. Mastering the basics is a mandatory thing. You know, you gotta be good at the basics. It doesn't matter if you're a competition shooter, if you're a tactical shooter, if you're in law enforcement, you're a prepared citizen or military, you need to master the basics and be good at them and be able to do them second nature. Um, so make sure that you're training on the basics and training right with a solid foundation and that's gonna set you up for success whenever you begin training more regimented. Now, you may be asking, what are the fundamentals? What are the basics? Well, obviously, you know, you got your stance, you have your grip, your trigger pull, your trigger squeeze, your sight picture, and your sight alignment. That comes with pistol. With you shooting long range, breathing is gonna come into play and things of that nature. So you need to understand going and practicing on the range working on the fundamentals. And guess what? You're always going to be working on the fundamentals to be faster and more efficient. Like I said, there's no such thing as advanced catching school for the NFL or for football. So I don't really buy that there's advanced shooting either. It's just people showing you how to be more efficient when it comes to the basic fundamentals. Now, I've mastered the fundamentals. 
and I'm curious what kind of shooter do I want to be, all right? There's different types of shooters. You can be either well-rounded, meaning you shoot everything, which is what we like to do here at Brown Hatchet, or you can be a specialist. Now, what is a specialist? A specialist is a person who is a master of one skill, meaning they either shoot pistols only, or they only shoot two gun, or more of your competition style shooter, or the trainer that only trains shooting from concealed carry appendix. Those guys are very, very good at what they do, and they are masters of their craft. A well-rounded shooter is someone who is a jack of all trades, but a master of none, right? So if you're training to be a jack of all trades, just have a healthy understanding that you will not be as good as somebody who is training on one thing only to be a master of that one skill set. Whether that's long range shooting, whether that's drawing from appendix and that's all they do, whether that's competition shooting, those guys are gonna be masters of that. And you can have, it's good to build the expectation that it's gonna either be harder for me to be able to achieve the level that they're at because they're only training one thing, or I can try and become a master of one in the, in the end, you're gonna to have to play that balance game because your other skill sets will suffer because you're gonna to have to dedicate more time to that one skill set. So understand that's just something that you have to accept as being, as being a well-rounded shooter is that you are gonna be a jack of all trades and a master of none versus somebody who is a master of one. Now understand when I'm well, training to be well-rounded, what I wanna be is not slow or have an excuse as why I'm not good at something. I wanna be very, very efficient, very fast, very accurate, but mostly I wanna be very capable with any weapon system and any type of shooting that there is. I wanna be well-versed in the different types of shooting, whether that's long range, whether that's concealed carry, whether that's you know using a pistol or running a rifle or a sub gun, any type of shooting, I wanna be well-rounded. I wanna have that one warrior, one sword type of mindset. What does being a well-rounded shooter mean? Well, if you're thinking about it from a preparedness standpoint, it means that you're going to be a flexible asset to your team. So if you have a community and you guys establish a team within that community and now you are very well rounded and you can do long range shooting, you can do DMR roles, you can do you know CQB or urban, urban combat because you're proficient in all the weapons and all the different types of weapons handling and you're well rounded, you give that team a lot more flexibility in what they can do and what they can achieve. And so that's why I like to be training to be a well rounded shooter and that's what our courses are geared for is for folks who want to be well-rounded. The cool thing about going to a training course that teaches you to be well-rounded, especially if you're a new shooter, is it helps get you started off and obviously being solid in the foundation of the fundamentals and allows you the option to be able to go the competition route or the tactical route um, or the well-rounded shooter route and more prepared citizens. So you can take different routes. And at the end of the day, you guys all have the same common area of having a solid foundation in the fundamentals. And that's what's most important. Now I will say this, something I hear a lot in the community is, oh, well, I'm a tactical shooter. And that's why I'm not as, you know, not as proficient. It doesn't matter if you're a tactical shooter or a competition shooter. That is not an excuse to be bad at the fundamentals or to be slower. You should always be trying to achieve faster times, more accurate, standards, right? So I want to make sure even though I'm a well-rounded shooter that I'm still competitive in terms of being able to perform even if it was in a competition type setting because I'm constantly training on those skills and tr constantly striving to be better. So make sure that you do not use I'm a tactical shooter as an excuse to suck at the fundamentals. Now understand, as a well-rounded shooter, competitions are a great tool. Just because you're a well-rounded shooter doesn't mean that you don't have to go to competitions. What competitions do for you, even if you not, are not trying to be a competitor um, or a competition shooter, it allows you to be immersed into a setting where you are practicing your skill sets and seeing where is your level of performance under stress. The other good thing competition shooting can do for you as a well-rounded shooter is it will help you to see where am I at when it comes to shooting cold, meaning I haven't warmed up on the range, I'm just shooting right now, 
it's on-demand performance, and that will help you identify either training pitfalls or things that you need to work on. So competitions are a great tool for you to identify where you need to improve your training plan or where you need to work on different skill sets. Now understand the difference between a competition shooter and a well-rounded shooter is in competition shooters, they're very good at also, we call it gaming, right? There's whole courses taught by competition shooters for competition shooters just about stage planning and how to plan your stage. Whereas a well-rounded shooter is gonna have to see a problem on and identify what's what the fix is on the fly and then try to, you know, work the fix based off of you know training stress inoculation all those types of things but a competition shooter a a stage planner is a really really successful skill set to have if you're going to be a competition shooter so stage planning is huge but understand if you're going to go to a competition as a well-rounded shooter that's just something that's the nature of that side of shooting and that's just something that you have to accept and just go in with a plan saying hey I'm going to achieve these training criteria for me. I'm going to use this as a tool to identify different shortfalls that will help me to make a better training plan for the next time I go to the range. The biggest thing I see in, in courses as an instructor is, is people picking the wrong class. So if you're gonna to go to a class, you need to do a lot of self-reflection, like true self-reflection, and see where am I truly at when it comes to my shooting skill level. Not where do I think I'm at in terms of, you know, having that pride and like, oh yeah, I'm definitely advanced or I'm definitely intermediate or whatever. You gotta really do a good, solid look at yourself and then look at the curriculum and see, does this match up with where I need to go next when it comes to my shooting journey? Um, or is it way above my skill level and I'm going to be underwater the whole time? And what ends up happening is, is when there's a student that goes to a class that they are not supposed to be in because it's too advanced for them, it ends up bogging down the whole class and making the class pace a lot slower because that instructor has to focus on that one guy to be able to make sure he's safe or gal because they're not supposed to be in that class. The other thing is, is when you're in a class, you got to make sure that you go in with a humble mindset. You're not there to impress anybody. You're there to learn. So you got to make sure that you have a uh, mindset that's prepared to learn. I think one thing when it comes to taking a class, you know, I, I had this perspective when I went into the military of it's going to be an action movie. There's going to be tons of things that I'm just going to learn right off the bat and I get to do all this cool high speed stuff. And that wasn't the case. When you go to the military for all my vets out there who have a, a perspective thinking that it's going to be one way, that you're going to be doing high speed stuff right out the gate, and then your soul is crushed because you realize I have to go to this basic school, I have to go to this basic class and this basic course to be eventually allowed to do the high speed stuff. So you have to kind of understand that it's a building process. It's like building a house. You got to build a solid foundation and then you build your, your floor and then you build your walls and your struts and your outside structure and then you start to fill all that stuff in. So understand training is the same way. You're building upon things and if you build your house on a weak foundation, eventually it's going to come crashing down. So you got to make sure and understand this is a slow process. You're not going to go straight to black belt right out the gate. You need to, um, you know, do it the correct way of building a solid foundation and then moving forward. We hear it all the time. I'm here to do the running gun stuff. And it's like, well, let's start off with a basic course first, and then we'll slowly build you into being able to do running gun type shooting. Now, for those who are looking for a class, you've done the found fundamentals for a long time, you're really good, you have a solid foundation, and now you're ready to start shaving off those tenths of seconds from your time, that's when you start going to courses to look for that next little bit of information to help me be more efficient when it comes to the basics. Some of the biggest mind grenades that I've gotten, even for me, as if I go to be a student of a class, I've seen something or the instructor would show me something that was just a little bit of nugget of information that made the whole class worth it because it helped me 
find an inefficiency that I had in my process and be able to identify that and train that out of my regimen. If I'm working on a specific skill set and I'm trying to, for example, work on pistol from the appendix in concealed carry, I'm going to look for that specialist who, who works on that type of training and that's all they do. You got to find that specialty instructor to be able to learn the secrets of whatever skill set that you're working on to be able to implement that into your training. So that's where you can find a specialist or someone who's really, really good at something. For example, long range shooting or really good at reading winds and they're a long range shooter. It's good to go to those types of instructors to be able to identify or start um, learning a new skill set. Something else that I see a lot and uh, is, you know, in this community, we see a lot of folks that will buy gear just so they can buy performance because they're not willing and willing to put in the work towards training and doing the reps. It's the same exact thing when it comes to classes. Classes and going to training does not replace reps. You know, buying four or five classes in a span of two months and just going back to back to back classes is not going to help you improve. You have to get exposed to that information in the class and then it's on you on your own time at, at your range to be able to put in the reps and the dry fire to be able to kind of build that new skill set into habit and make it a normal action. So if you're going from a back to back to back class, you're getting constantly exposed to new information. You don't have time to actually practice that. You're never gonna grow as a shooter. The other thing when it comes to training is you gotta make sure that you're vetting your trainers. Um, and I say this all the time, I do it myself, but make sure that you're going to people who are teaching you how to do things the right way. Um, you know, when it comes to vetting your trainers, always make sure that your trainers are willing to do a demonstration and to show you that they can perform the standards that they're asking you to do. It's only fair. It's always terrible to see somebody waste money and learn from an instructor who is not a good instructor or um, is just there to take your money. And so it's always heartbreaking to see that. So make sure you vet your trainers on the front end. And if it smells bad, it's probably bad. So make sure you guys do a lot of research and do a good sniff test. The other thing also is whenever you're in class, um, if you find another student that's in the class with you, or if you come to one of our classes, it's always good to find a pace man, someone who's better than you. I like to look for a pace man myself because it helps me to set goals because I can chase that pace man who shoots faster than me and then learn from them what they're doing to be efficient in their skill set. And then I can kind of clone what they're doing and develop my own style. And eventually if I outpace that person, I'm gonna look for a new pace man. So always be willing to look for someone who's better than you. Uh, so that way you can learn how they're doing things and then it, ad adapt that to your own training and your own style and develop yourself as a shooter as you move along in your journey. The other thing is in classes, sometimes they'll provide you shooting standards. We are actually developing our own barrel and hatchet pistol and carbine standards and we're, we're gonna be releasing those to the public here soon. But I want you guys to understand that all standards are is a training tool. It is not the end goal, it's not the, the end all be all, if you will. Um, so make sure that you have that in mind. Now understand, we, we just want to incentivize people to push themselves and to be better. So training standards are just a set of goals that you can use, but at the end of the day, you should be surpassing standards and setting new goals for yourself. So don't let a standard just be a rite of passage or a bragging rights tool. Just let it be a training aid that helps you to be a better shooter, and then you establish new goals moving forward. quick word from our sponsor and after that word I will see you guys back here to talk about the barrel and hatchet classes and what we offer in those courses. So guys, we get a lot of support from you, the member, but we also do get some support from some companies and one company specifically we wanna highlight is Shields. Now the cool thing is they are a retail store, but they are an employee owned company and they have over 30 stores and counting and they specialize in outdoor equipment and gear. One of the brands that they actually carry, Eric, that is one of my favorite to look for all the time. You know how much I love bags. They actually carry Mystery Ranch. I was just in the market the other day looking for a new 24-hour assault pack that Mystery Ranch offers, specifically in the wax canvas. Shields had it for about one of the best prices that I could find on the internet. They do actually offer a, a price match guarantee. 
if you choose to do that if you find it cheaper somewhere else but they had it for 179 dollars then they also offer their slice program where i was able to split that up into five equal payments completely interest-free so my wife doesn't know exactly how much money i'm spending here nice well if you end up making a mistake roy and you get something that you don't like they do have the shields guarantee where you can actually get your money back guaranteed so you never are taking a risk tell me about the online store yes yeah, so if you guys want to shop online just jump down into the description down below you'll find the link for that they're carrying tons of different other stuff like optics they carry vortex they carry leupold uh check out uh, that section So I've talked about, you know, finding the right class. Now, what type of classes does Barrel and Hatchet do? So Barrel and Hatchet has five staple classes that we provide to you. Um, you can sign up for those classes on our website. We have some local classes, or if you want us to, you know, host a class in your area, just reach out to us and we will make sure that we try and battle plan a way to be able to teach that course in your state and in your area. We have five staple classes. We have fighting pistol, we have fighting carbine, we have scoped carbine, we have medical classes, which are done with guardian angel consulting, and we have night vision classes, which are our ghost fighter courses. In our pistol class, we really delve into the fundamentals in establishing a strong foundation with good, clean form. We're very big on form. We also talk about the holster draw and to make it efficient and also allow the shooter to build their draw to be able to go the competition route, or the prepared citizen tactical route. But we do focus a lot on the holster draw. Afterwards, we teach you about malfunctions and how to clear those and different types of malfunctions that you may experience and how you can be empowered as a shooter to fix your own problems. Afterwards, we talk about loads, so your tactical reload or your emergency reload and when and where to use those and what is important to work on. We also talk about footwork and stance. Footwork is probably one of the harder things to master, just like grip when it comes to your fundamentals. And it's really, really important, but it's so, so practical, especially if you're trying to be a running gun shooter and a well-rounded shooter. Footwork is key, even in competition, it's key. So we do teach proper footwork and how to move and get off the X, so that way you can stay alive or win the next competition. We also talk about barricade shooting and how to shoot off of barricades and navigate those and how you can be effective if you're shooting off of a barricade or from behind cover and concealment. Now, we do have some other drills that we add into the pistol course that are super exciting, but we would love to see you guys in our pistol courses. Next, we also have our fighting carbine course, and obviously with our fighting carbine course, we also cover the fundamentals. Most of the time it's gonna be 100 yards and in is where the fighting carbine course is gonna shine, and we teach you the fundamentals and the proper foundation for shooting a carbine. We talk about sling manipulation, as well as different types of ways to carry the rifle and have good solid muzzle discipline and control. We teach you different loads, your speed reload or your tactical reload when it's good to use them and how to reload off of your shooting belt or off of your chest rig or your plate carrier. And also if you have a malfunction, how to clear it. If you get a stove pipe or, or excuse me, if you get a double feed or um, a failure to fire, what are the immediate actions to be able to fix that and help you fix your own problems. We also talk about different shooting positions that are gonna be conducive for um, shooting a carbine and how you can be more effective from shooting at all different types of positions and how to navigate around different barricades as well. And you're gonna utilize those shooting positions to be able to work different types of scenarios and different drills. We also talk about footwork as well in the carbine course and how to have good footwork as well as good muzzle control as you're moving because getting off the X is super important. And in both classes, we pretty much use the pistol class and the fighting carbine class to teach you practical skills to be able to run and gun, quote unquote. Um, we believe that it's a very practical way of shooting, um, and we've done it a lot. If you haven't seen it, we do you know these open gym sessions where we have guys from our community that we train with, and guys from, like Ben from Wiseman Company, and we practice doing these practical shooting skills and drills, and the fighting carbine and fighting pistol class set you up for success to be able to do that type of shooting safely, effectively, and make you not a liability while you're doing it. We also have the scope carbine classes, uh, which teaches you how to take your 556, you know, SPR or your general purpose rifle and stretch that out. Um, and we go to distances like 800 yards, but we do have scope carbine classes as well. 
We also have our Ghost Fighter Night Vision classes, which come in Alpha and Bravo series. And the Alpha series, we actually get a lot of questions about because it doesn't have a super high round count. But what we do with that course is teach you how to live under night vision. Um, you know, we want to make sure that you understand how to do everything at night that you would during the day. And so we have you walking and navigating different terrain. Um, also show you like your signature that you give off with your weapon and your muzzle device and maybe things that you have on your gear that's giving off a signature that you don't even realize. We also had to teach you, you know, teach you guys how to go from an unlit environment into a lit environment and how to prep your equipment for that. And also use every single tool that you have at your disposable disposal. Use the correct tool or the best tool for the situation at hand that give you the best effects. We do cover some shooting inside of that course. We do teach you how to uh, zero your, you know, your IR laser device, whether that's converging zero or parallel zero and also how easy it is to hide from night vision. A lot of people have this misconception that if I put on night vision, I can see everything, nothing can hide from me. And it's actually pretty easy to hide from night vision. So that's what we cover in our Ghost Fighter Alpha course. In our Ghost Fighter Bravo course, it's more shooting based, but what's really important about the Bravo course is you have to be grounded and have a solid foundation in your fighting carbine and your fighting pistol skills. A lot of it is going to require consistency from you as a shooter because now you're going to be doing skills that you did during the day at night and you probably can't see your reloads or you can't see you draw from the holster or you can't look if you're trying to clear a malfunction you have to do a lot of that stuff by feel so we teach you how to do that stuff in the bravo course and it really relies on the shooter to have solid and sound consistency with their weapon systems during the day so that way they're successful at night under knots we also talk, talk to you guys about different types of load procedures and rifle carries, as well as nonverbal communication or marking you know, targets for other people. We talk about passive and overt type of aiming, uh, and also different types of night drills, more barricade shooting. We also have our medical courses, which is with Guardian Angel Consulting, where we have, lot, we have scenarios that we put you guys through. There's Stop the Bleed Bleeders. Um, we do have an anatomy class that he teaches. And so that way you are equipped to be able to utilize proper medical skills for whatever situation you may come upon and be an asset to somebody. And what's crazy is the medical course is the one where people actually probably will utilize that training more real world than other shooting classes that you go to. So make sure you always train medical. It's not as sexy, but it's more important. Let's talk about gear, all right? Your gear is dictated by your mission. And right now, your mission as a prepared citizen or a paid professional is to train. Your job is to get ready. So make sure that you're going out and you're training and that will help you dictate what type of gear you need. Now, if you have a community of people that you train with and that you work with, then make sure that you identify what roles each individual has and that will also dictate what type of gear and stuff and things that you have set up. So remember, your team will help you dictate your roles and your team's gear is gonna be dictated by the mission set. So make sure that you're disciplined in your role. If you're the comms guy, make sure you're smart on comms. If you're gonna be the medical dude, make sure you're spun up on all your medical stuff and that you have that role in mind when you're setting up your equipment. At the end of the day, having good shooting skills is going to make you a better asset to your team because you're gonna be able to safely maneuver, safely manipulate your weapon system and be able to effectively engage while you're doing your role that's set aside for you from your team. So having good weapons handling skills is a personal responsibility that you as a shooter who wants to be well-rounded needs to have a solid grasp on so that way you're not flagging people or being a liability to other people in your team while you're performing the roles that are assigned to you. The other thing also is whenever you are training more, you're gonna find yourself that you're gonna be narrowing down your equipment and your gun closet for, as a collector to things that are more refined to what you like and what you wanna train with. Um, you know, and that's gonna happen naturally. Now understand, I'm not saying don't buy guns and do things like that, absolutely not. In fact, it's a great way to kind of push back against the system that's oppressive. But 
at the end of the day, you're gonna find yourself gravitating towards the same rifle or the same pistol every single time. And if you wanna have that one warrior, one sword mentality, kind of find your main squeeze and run with that and that's what you train with and you prepare with. All right, so now that I've talked about some of those different types of things about kind of that training philosophy and what we offer in the fighting pistol course, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my belt setup that I'm using today. All right, guys, so here is my belt setup. I'm using a Wilder Tactical UAB or Urban Assault belt. And I've been using this belt for, I think, just over a year now. I've been using Wilder Tactical products for a long time. Their stuff is awesome. And uh, yeah, we'll start from the left side where the gloves are at and work our way to the right. So I'm using Mechanics gloves. Uh, Mechanics gloves are really, really nice. Uh, I like them just because these ones are super thin. Another good pair of gloves is the SKD Tactical Pig gloves. They're super, super thin. I'm able to use my, my iPhone with this and at the same time have some dexterity on my trigger. But I don't really wear gloves when I'm shooting. Um, usually I wear it for other admin things or you know if I'm patrolling or doing something of that nature, I'll usually put them on. But I don't wear them really when I'm shooting very much. I always have an S carabiner that I have on my belt. It's just super convenient. So having an S carabiner, you can get these on Amazon, you can get them at Walmart. Very, very handy to have and you can hook other kinds of stuff to it. I do have a compass in this pouch. You know why? Because a good, you never want to get lost, right? So make sure you're never that guy who's lost and has no idea where he's at. So I always carry a compass with me. Now underneath here, I do have a Leatherman and this is, a great thing to have on the range. There is a sighting tool that's with this. And um, I do have a Leatherman because you never know, right? You never know uh, when you're gonna need a Leatherman. It's always just good to have. And I think it's from the military always training me, like make sure you got a Leatherman or a Gerber on you. Um, and it's just super handy to have. Um, shot timer, this is a special pie. You can get it on Amazon. This is USB rechargeable, really, really nice. It's also Bluetooth and super simple to use. It also doesn't cost that much. Like we've got some of the, uh, you know, I used to use Pocket Pro timers all the time. They gotten so expensive and they're super finicky. I've used this in the in its wet conditions. Now, I, I don't think it's waterproof, but I've used it in conditions where it was raining and it never broke. Um, so really, really nice to have. Running a Safari Land holster, I'm running the MMP Metal. So uh, MMP Metal with a Hollow Sun 507 competition on there. Um, great gun. It's super, super smooth. I shoot everything on there stock. I, I ran a stock trigger when I was shooting Glock as well. So it's just nice. Um, I do have the nub. If you have a Safari Land ALS holster, get the nub. It is a game changer. It just increases the amount of surface area on that nub. So that way when you hit it, you don't miss it. Uh, there's nothing more demoralizing than going to draw from the holster and your gun doesn't come out because it's still stuck and locked in the holster. So getting a nub is legit. And I think it's only like 20 bucks. I do have a Wilder Tactical IFAC kit. It's super important. You always want to have medical on you. So on my belt, I've got an IFAC. On my body armor, I've got an IFAC. But if I'm wearing any type of gear, I always have an IFAC on me. That includes a tourniquet, right? So uh, always have a tourniquet on you. Make sure you get a good tourniquet that's not a fake one. North American Rescue, buy it from a verified source. If it costs you $15 on Amazon for two tourniquets, it's probably fake. So these usually are around $30. You can get them on either our website or go to North American Rescue and buy it directly from them. I'm gonna talk about this holster system real quick. This is a articulating leg strap from Wilder Tactical. This thing is money. All the leg strap does is it prevents the flop, so it doesn't flop back and forth and slap my leg when I'm moving, but at the same time, it allows my leg to articulate and not pull on that elastic band. And also, when it comes to this, they actually have a new base plate now. They have a, their old version was the modified uh, Safari Land, but now they have a new version where it's their own proprietary, where I can actually change the cant of my holster depending on how I want it and my personal preference. With the UAB belt, they also have clips. So I can run Molly, right, like this, but all their UAB systems comes with set screws and they lock tight in. So it's a, it's a slot on the belt and it slides in there on that slot and then lock tights in with a screw. Super rugged, super durable, very nice. So. 
The other thing I'm running is I'm running a Wilder Tactical dump pouch. This thing folds up to be super small. I put all kinds of goodies and stuff in there. Um, I do have this carabiner. Usually if I'm gonna be doing helicopter crap, it helps me, a place for me to hook my helo lanyard. This is a Tor Knives hatchet. Um, this I actually got from my good friend Wiseman Company, uh, Ben. And uh, it is, I'm, I'm trying it out. You know, it's the belt mounted system. I'm trying it out to see how easy it is, how, how much it retains to the actual belt. Um, so I'm still working on this. Obviously, I'm going to need to be training on this because it's a new piece of equipment for me. Um, but this is my, my hatchet that I carry with me. I do have a single magazine for ARs. It's my ready mag. So if I am going to be reloading, it's usually from this mag here. And then I'm gonna be reloading this mag pouch from my vest or my body armor or my chest rig. But I always keep just one AR mag there versus two. I do have two pistol mag holders and they also have the cant that's actually built in with the Wilder System UAB system. And it's super nice. These are great. You can actually tighten the tension on these pouches or loosen them, which is very convenient. And then here I've got another S carabiner and I actually have a hollow sun tool and some nano tools to do side adjustments, right? So that's really convenient. And then I also have a SPUDS, I actually talked about this in the EDC video, a SPUDS lens cleaning cloth. Um, if you go to gun shows or you go to gun events or whatever, um, most of the time these manufacturers are giving these things away. If you wanna buy one, you can buy them directly online, but very convenient. And then here's my range tool. Um, is a Mark II Milwaukee Sharpie or Milwaukee holster for my marker. What's great about this is I can index this with one hand. I don't have to have two hands uh, to be able to pull that off. And I also, when I decap it, the cap stays in the holster. So I don't have to hold the cap. I just pull the marker out and mark whatever I need to mark. We've actually heard from medics that have been using this. They have it on their medic gear and it's really, really nice for marking up patients. We decided to go with the Milwaukee holster, uh, marker specifically because you, the supporter has said, hey, you know, Milwaukee marks on more surfaces, it marks on more things, can you switch over to the Milwaukee? So we made a Milwaukee Mark II holster. This does use a Cobra buckle system, so it is really nice, and I do have an inner and outer belt system with this. So anyways, that's what I'm running today. All right, guys, thanks again for checking out another HatchetCast episode. Remember, the time for training is now. We have a time of peace, relatively, in most parts of the world here. And so you wanna make sure that you're getting ready. And this is the opportunity to be able to get all your ducks in a row and make sure your skill sets are ready or that your family members or people in your community are ready and then start tightening that network and make sure that you guys have all the assets you need to be prepared. At the end of the day, make sure you guys go out and train. If you haven't done so already, you want to check out our lifetime membership opportunity, go to the lifetime membership uh, tab on our website and you can sign up for a lifetime membership there. Also, remember this is the month of February, we are doing a giveaway. And in that February giveaway, we're giving away a set of PBS 14s, we're giving away a upper receiver complete, and we're giving away a ghost chest rig with a ghost map pouch. And the only thing you have to do is if you buy something on the website, for every $5 that's spent on the website, it puts your name in the hat for that giveaway. Um, and so, you know, if you buy a class, that's a lot of names you get put in the hat towards that possible chance of winning one of those three prizes. Also check for our upcoming classes. We do have upcoming fight, fighting pistol and fighting carbine classes, as well as uh, some ghost fighter night vision classes in March up at Element Training Center. And if you would like us to be hosted at your range, let us know. We would love to host a training class at your range and be able to train with you. It's such a pleasure to do so. Make sure you guys check out our Instagram, our X, and we have the Hatchet Cast podcast on Spotify and on YouTube, which is a separate channel. So make sure you guys tune into that to hear different topics that we're talking about. But at the end of the day, guys, make sure you train, make sure you're the asset and not the liability. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.